you know, God is so big and so loving, so compassionate. He so loved the world, the whole world, that he gave his only begotten son. That's a big deal. And I remind myself of that a lot because we need to re remind ourselves that Jesus died not just for us, but for the whole world. And so I keep that in mind as I am believing for open doors in different countries. So let me tell you something big that is open. One of the well-known imams, that's the leader of a mosque, the leader of the Muslims in a country, has invited me to speak at a worldwide prayer conference. Now, remember, these are Muslims that I will be speaking to. I'm a Christian. I'm a spirit-filled Christian. I love the word. I speak in tongues, all of that. So they know what I am. And so they know what I will do. And I'm not trying to offend them, but I want to walk in faith and I want to walk in victory and I want to walk through open doors. And the big thing about the Muslims is that they like old women. I'm an old woman, that's for sure, but I'm an old believing woman. And I believe God has big things for us and he wants to do big things in your day in my day. So I want to talk to you about believing big. So I am believing big that when I get to speak in that conference, I can have an altar call. People will get born again. People will get turned on to God. They'll read the Bible. They'll pray. I want to make a difference. So I need you to pray for me. Now, Hebrews, let me just give you a little quick lesson. Hebrews 11.1 1 says, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. So I'm hoping for big open doors, no compromise, no compromise, but to really present Jesus as he is the Savior of the world. So I want you to believe with me, okay? So you're watching me. Make this a matter of prayer and of faith. And the world of faith is unseen. Isn't that something? And, but it's just as real as the world we see. So when we believe to be born again, we don't see everything, but we believe what God said, and we receive Jesus as our Savior. We believe that we have eternal life. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. And so God's word is true. And we cannot see truth with our eyes or always recognize it with senses, feeling. But when we put our trust in God, we believe something we cannot touch or see. Isn't that true? I just like to pray for healing right now. You know, you say, well, healing is in the Bible. Jesus purchased it for us as well as taking our sins. So if you're hurting in your body or wherever you have a problem, put your hand on that part because I'm going to send the word. So Father, in Jesus name, I send the word and the word cannot return void. And it's going into every one who is believing today. You're a big God, you do big things, and you have big promises, and I thank you for this. And I thank you for a miracle for everyone who's watching me. Now, let's look at hope. We walk by faith and not by sight, but hope is needed, now listen to me, to cope. So I have hope to speak in this big, Muslim conference, my hope is to reveal Jesus. And they, it's so crazy, but Muslims believe in old women, they like them. So I certainly fit it. 
So hope is more than wishful thinking. Hope is the vision of faith that you desire. I'm going to read that again to you because I think it's so meaningful. Hope is more than wishful thinking. It is the vision of faith that you desire. And I can remember things that I believed for a long time ago that I'm just now seeing. So you don't let go of hope. You don't let go of faith. And sometimes you have to get somebody to pray with you to hold steady, right? Because sometimes I believe for such big things, I think, oh God, but I have seen how it works. Now, hope is to anticipate usually with pleasure and confidence. So when I ask you to pray with me and I pray with you, I do it with pleasure. It's a privilege. And of course, I used to be a pastor's wife, so I love to do this. And I do it with confidence. Why? Because I'm old and I have a long, long history of answered prayer. I know how the Bible works. So I don't just think, oh, well, maybe it'll work. I think it works. The Bible works. And so hope is anticipating. And usually it's with pleasure and confidence. Oh, I have hope for this, for my children to be born again, for my uh, grandchildren to be spirit filled, for our leadership in our nation to be transformed, for God to move in our nation, ooh, in a big way, big way. Don't gripe, pray. And don't complain to people because then they'll complain back and you don't have anything good going. And don't stop hoping because the news isn't good. You think, oh, well, I don't know if I should keep hoping. But hoping is a positive addition to your faith to keep your requests alive. So we have faith and we have hope and we put them together. So we say, I have faith, God will do that. But when I don't see it right away, I have hope. So I combine faith and hope together and I combine them together for you. I know that God wants to save your family. I know that God wants to heal your body. I know that God wants to move in our nation. I'm not just looking at the news. I'm praying to change the news. And you are too, because I believe our time together is contagious. Honey, you're catching it. It's coming alive to you. And you're not just going to listen to the moans and groans of people but you're going to speak the promises of God. And when you watch the news, it's not to be discouraged, but it's to change the news. So I just love this time with you today. And I believe you and I can believe for big things. And I want to encourage you, you know, if you haven't gotten my book, it's not over till you end, get the book. It'll help you keep in hope and it'll help you keep in faith. And I love you and I love this wonderful opportunity to minister to you today. Be blessed. Let's speak what God says and not what the devil says. Mm -hmm.